Welcome back to MK Sports Cars. Two Jaffa Cakes have both passed their IVA with flying colours, mainly orange. The RX-5 has a new friend. It's the Turbo and it's set on kill and ready to roll. It's a hard knocks life. New booster build Project Milo is coming along nicely. On this week's segment of Keeping Up With The Car Hackians, Doctor Doctor, I've got a problem with my pipes. Now you see me, now you don't. The S2000 has its new camo bonnet fitted with invisible bonnet catches. Where are they gone? Don't go anywhere, guys. You don't want to miss it. Hi guys, welcome back to the MK Sports Cars Workshop. Well, what are we on with today? Well, we've got a new one. Uh, a new chassis has arrived. We've started another new build. This is a MK Indy RR, so it's fully round tube, fully rose joint. It's going to be a race car. It's hashtag Brian's car. Uh, Gen 2 booster going in here, dry sump system, and etc. Let's talk through what we've been up to. Right, well, let's start on the front end, shall we? What's been going on? Well, we've got the top and bottom wishbones on there, the billet front uprights as well, um, all the rose joints is the M12 by 1.25 rose joints. Protect shops, our go-to supplier on these, 400 series, single adjustables. And uh, we run, I think these are 300 pound springs actually we've got on these on the boost that we run. Cars are quite light generally. All our rocker system, radiator brackets in, steering rack is a 2.4. Escort quick rack, plenty quick enough for what you need. Push rods are in. These are all, just so you know guys as well, we've changed these so these are fully adjustable now. You can just undo this and raise and lower your suspension. It's a left-handed and right-handed uh, threaded rose joint. So front end's on, billet uprights are on, that's all cool. Right, on to the middle section. Well, what we got? We've got the billet pedal box gone in, master cylinders, all the brake lines have gone in up to the four-way brake tee with the brake switch, that's in. Then we move on to ECU mounting panel has gone in as well. Floor pans fitted and bonded on. This is having the FIA roll cage on it, so the bracketry is already pre-mounted for that. We're going up to here, and what we're going to be fitting here is this. This is a line lock, basically. It's a race car, we're just going to have a line lock that's going to be sitting in here as well. Um, it's going to be his handbrake, effectively, for the vehicle. Right, on to the rear of the car. What have we got in here with our Indy RR top rose jointed wishbones. They're all in. Protect shocks, again, are in. Fuel tanks all mounted, 33 litre fuel tank. We've got the boss in here for the fuel pump. Standard booster fuel pump is on this as well. So it's a generation two high booster engine. We'll be using a stock ECU loom and we always use the pump then for it. It's much easier. Then we've got a nice brand new 3.62 ratio. Not the normal go to 338, which is normally what we have. This is going to be a sprint car. So he wants it to accelerate a bit harder and a bit faster. We're not aiming for top end speed of 130 mile an hour. This will top out around there, sort of 120 mile now, which is perfect. It'll get there like a scolded cat. Right, guys, well, as we're at the chassis, let's get on to chassis production time. Well, it's up here, and hopefully it's moving along nicely for you, and your kit will be arriving soon, ready for build. Right, what we got next? Well, complete kit car magazines arrived. I've had a good old read of that with a cup of tea uh, today. If you haven't subscribed, do, guys. Good little read. It's a nice little article on anti-roll bars. It's well worth a read, actually. While we're on about arrivals, let's talk about new products. A couple of new products that arrived, actually. First one, nice simple one. This is a pop shaft catcher, new one we sort of designed, really. Um, especially for the bike engine, guys. I know we've seen a few issues with, not just, you know, not MKs as such, maybe, but other brands as well, where they've had pop shaft failures, especially on the front engine here, where it's vibrated off the sprocket adapter, where it ain't been dumped tight or locked tight in position. We've designed this. So this can now bolt onto the bulkhead here. This will disattach with these two holes. It's got a nice U-bracket, so when your prop shaft is finishing about here, that would then catch um, if it does go, and then save your engine casings and that. Very simple product, be on the website and available. Or if you're not sure, help us out with a phone call, email, etc. We can talk you through that. But these will be, this is the first laser cut one. We will powder coat them in black, so it'll be nice and clean and ready and shiny to bolt onto your car. Second one, what we got here? Well, we've developed a little Harness pads, so these are designed to sit on the seat belts, we'll strap round them, you can go in a two inch or three inch belt as well, designed here, a bit of extra padding for you, um, all branded up, so if you have got some unbranded, not MK sports cars harnesses, you can now have branded looking harnesses. Um, and again, they're on the website, or if you're not sure, hook us up a phone call and email again, and we'll go through it with you. 
here with the RX5 and the turbo conversion, which we've been going on for the last few weeks. So we get into it, shall we? We know last week, TDO4 13 turbo, we've got on here 13 LT. Um, it's basically Subaru uh, Mitsubishi uh, based turbo. Bolted onto our manifold that we supply here with a kit and our intercooler, it's all plumbed in. So plumb lines are come in, we come off of the top of the turbo, in, out, and then back through the plenum. And this is your intake tube in here. We've got a, can't see, but it's right tucked down in here, is the oil drain back. We've got the oil feed here line that which runs around. We've actually done it slightly differently to how some people do it. We've got a, a pickup on this side, which is round here. We've come off of that section there as well. You can come off in several, there's three different places you can come off in it. There is also where the oil pressure sender is down there. You can come off also this cam port at the back of the head as well. Um, injectors have gone in. This has got EV14 Bosch injectors in there. Um, we've got a map sensor, a three bar map sensor here plugged in. It's going to the Omex ECU. Um, that's pretty much it, they're pretty simple to do. Obviously we've done all the, not the hard work on these really. So we know you bolt the turbo on, you know you put the down pipe on, all our exhaust. I mean, you bolt on the turbo kit and it comes out in exactly the same hole as where the standard um, exhaust system comes out. So that's all been done. So you just buy the kit, bolt it up, and it's literally giant Lego, isn't it, Joseph? Really, doesn't take that long. We've done a little bit, taking a little bit longer, so we're doing a bit of a manual to go through this. So when you buy it and do the install on one of our RX5 kits, we can give you a guide and hopefully steer you on the direction so you can do it at home in your garage. We've put a little heat shield here. Um, you would do, do a ducting kit for the intercooler as well. Um, put a little heat shield here just for the intake as well to do that. And do you know what? A fuel pump, which you can't see, that's gone in. I think we're ready for fire up. Are we ready for fire? See if she runs. We can tell that was the first time because we haven't never run it. We'll give it a slight flip. We expect it to be running not that great because it's on a stock map at the moment with the uh, bigger injectors and the turbo's all gone on there and everything's gone in there. So we expect it to be running a bit rough because this is going to go off the dyno. And what we'll do is just go off to RLM and we'll get it mapped to RLM and then see what numbers comes up. We're expecting, you know, early 200s as they always do. We're not going to go too mad with this and then it can always be turned up if, uh, if the customer will. So he's going from stock, another sort of, you know, 50, 60, 70 horsepower on top of what he would normally get. They normally see around 220, 230 horsepower, which is more than enough in these because it'll go bags and bags of torque. So yeah, we've done an oil change, haven't we, as well on this? Oil changes have been done as well because turbo's fresh. We know we didn't put old oil for it um, and Joseph's right. So yeah, looking super sharp, super clean, bodywork to go on, send it off to RLM. Previously on Keeping Up With The Car Hackians, you saw us trying to polish our pipes with tomato sauce and aluminium foil. Today, we're going to be polishing our pipes with Dr. Downpipe. I've just learned so much and I realize how crazy messed up the system is. It's great to see everybody interacting with us on social media. I've clearly stimulated something by trying to get the pipes. This has all come out of just trying to get some pipes clean, basically. Uh, this week, we're going to cheat a little bit because this is a product that is apparently for cleaning pipes called Dr. Downpipe. And the best part about this, it's got instructions on the back. So spray directly onto your downpipes, leave to soak. Use a cleaning pad to agitate the dirt, and if heavily soiled, repeat the process. Well, let's give it a go, shall we? First things first, let's put the gloves on. Spray onto your downpipes, leave to soak for one minute. Included in the kit from the Dr. Downpipes came a couple of brushes that are agitating brushes or agitating pads. So the idea is that we've left this on there now for about a minute um, and then you've got to agitate it. Now I was really looking for a product when I started this little segment. I was looking for a product that you just put on and it was something that you had a very little elbow grease with. So I know that you can use Auto Soul and you can be there for six hours which somebody in the, in the uh, Facebook group has already done. It looks great what you've done there, but that was six hours, and some of us don't have a spare six hours in the day. So I'm hoping that this is gonna clean it all up and be miraculous in minutes rather than hours. Let's agitate.
Well, I'm busy agitating the surfaces as per the instructions. Um, what can I say, first of all? I really wanted this one to work, but I've got to be brutally honest with you. <laughs> I think you need to go back to either tomato sauce, or which was pretty hopeless, or um, Harpic. Go back to the Harpic. This doesn't seem to be tickling it at all. Am I doing something wrong, guys? Put in the comments below if I'm doing something completely wrong and I'm being an idiot, because it's likely. I'm going to do this again, because I really wanted this product to work, but it, it doesn't seem to be doing what we really need it to do. Uh, it does say on here, use a cleaning pad to agitate the dirt and grime if heavily soiled, repeat the process. Now, I can repeat this and repeat this and repeat this, but I can't do it for six hours. I might as well use auto salt. So I'm gonna do it. <coughs> God, it's got in my throat. <coughs> I'm gonna do it twice, and then we'll see how we get on. That's more of me rubbing it than, than the actual product working, I think. So we're a couple of goes in now. I've sprayed it two, three times. I've given it a little bit of abrasion. I would say I've probably done a little bit too much uh, on the elbow grease front, a bit more than I wanted to. Um, it has started to come up. Uh, this is the section that I've been working with. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but this is the section I've been working with, uh, just with the abrasion pad. That's what's come off of the, the pad. Uh, this is the other section that I've just sprayed and done nothing with. So I've left it to work its magic. And I've got to be honest with you, it's done nothing. So I can only presume that this is me and the abrasive pad. I brought this out into the light so we can actually see what we're doing. But if you look here closely, you'll see that this is the section that I was rubbing with the abrasive compound. And this is the section that was just sprayed. Obviously the section that was just sprayed is done very little. Um, I've just washed it off. This is the section that I was rubbing. I'm pretty convinced that it was the elbow grease that has got this clean, rather than actually the product. If anyone from Dr. Downpipe wants to come down here and show me how it's done, you are more than welcome, just hit me up. Right, GBS zero time. Uh, this is landing in the workshop again. We've done some electrical stuff for the customer. We've wired up some other switches and lights on it for him as well. But it's into us because we're going to be taking it off uh, and just dropping it off a dyno for him with uh, Luke Stephen Developments, actually. Right, it should make a decent number horsepower at ZTEC. We'll see what the results come out like. RX5 time again. What are we on with this one? Well, lots of bits. It, on, it is a big tidy up, unfortunately, on this car. So we're going way backwards before we even go forward. So sometimes it looks like we've done nothing. So wiring we've been on with, there was a big old bird's nest under here. We've been trying to simplify that, getting that down and cutting out what we don't need to. We found in things like this, which, you know, not acceptable. We're trying to deal with all of these little things that we keep finding on this vehicle. Um, but the exhaust system's gone on now, the link pipe's gone on um, as well. But it's mainly all the wiring. It starts and it runs now, which is great. So now that we've got all that working correctly, um, we can then just start making that and tidying it up, start well, making it look less of a bird's nest, I suppose, because we're going to be running the stock instrument cluster back on this rather than the DD2. We want to show you um, what it's like a standard, really. Right, over here at uh, hashtag Nigel's car, S2000 time. Well, we've been on with, well, nose cone's gone on now. As you know, bonnet was done and wrapped, and now we've done uh, rub rubber catches on the back here and hidden catches on the front, uh, which is what Nigel requested on his particular car. So that pops off like so. And we have a, 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 a catch here that uh, fits in, in, in the front nose cone, which is rather cool. So it just takes away one of the pairs that we needed. Obviously we've got the nice uh, rocker cover done and the bulkhead's all more or less mounted now with a battery cover and uh, header tank all in there as well. Right, and then we're on with interior stuff. It's just a final fit really on the dashboard. We've done all of that, that's all done. So we start doing, just uh, wiring up the final remaining bit. So it's got all the black uh, billet switches, our instrument gauges, which look rather nice and cool. 
um, all fitting in there. Steering column, quick release boss. So a solid piece column through here, collapsible bottom end. Oh, and we have fitted all the air filter and all that. He's custom air filter and all the brackets been done on that as well. So we're just waiting on seats now. I've been reliably informed these are meant to be with us in a few days time. So that's the next big project before we fit the seats and then the roll cage, the boot cover, wheels and tires down on the ground, geo getting ready for IVA. Right, well, let's go with more car updates, shall we? Over here at the other showroom, as you know, it's been a bit of a IVA fest over the last few weeks now. Well, hashtag uh, Joseph's car, passed its IVA the other week. We've been sitting about that, just cleaning, detailing. Stripe pack got on them. Very nice. Gloss pack, stripe pack. Uh, carbon air rush screen's gone on. A um, few other little touches that we've had to change uh, that he wanted spec-wise. But other than that, she's polished to boot and ready to send off the Lenuro. So we're going to see this car tearing up the strips down in Bournemouth, I do believe. So look out for him. If you see him, give him a wave. Right, not but one orange car, another orange car. Well, what's it? IVA Fest continues. The RX5 MC, well, passed uh, IVA test with flying cars, as you'd expect. Um, so, yeah, we've got to set about this car, a little bit of tidying up to do that we want to do, just to give it its final touch. Like, aero screen going to go on here. We've already got the carbon stripe. We're going to have an aero screen going on. Maybe change the mirrors to something else, maybe something a bit more whizzy. Um, and I think... I'm not so sure, but we may be taking this to Stoney if it isn't sold, because I think we may put this one up for sale. So you're interested in an RX5 MC, which got an RV, um, R15VY engine in there. It's about 185, 190 horsepower uh, that weighs only like uh, as much as a snail. Um, it's about 400, well, it was 480 kilos in IVA spec, full tank of fuel, everything on it. Um, and I think we weighed it without, as we normally would do, it was 460 kilos. So super light, massive power to weight ratio on this car. Um, I mean, look, <laughs> that's ridiculous how light this car. Super clean, all the cow horn paddle shift, um, bells and whistles, carbon everywhere. Pre-peg, pre-peg, CXRs, all round, Toyos. I mean, pff, awesome spec car. I say, if you're interested in it and you want to come down and have a look, then uh, give us a shout, phone call, email, hook myself or Neil up and we'll happily show you around. Right, it's update time on shows, I suppose. Don't forget, Stony Kit Car Show in May and we've got in July the Newark Kit Car Show. Also, looking, well, both attending those. It's going to be awesome shows. If the sun is shining, it'll be a fantastic event. Track day, don't forget about that. We've obviously got Landau and Brighton Park with complete kit car track day and then you roll into... Uh, what is it? Anglesey. Anglesey with the guys out in the sevens as well. Would you like your car on the stand at the Stony Kit Car Show? We're looking for three bike engine cars to join us on the stand and you could be one of them. you'd be happy to show off your pride and joy and give people a first-hand account of what it's like to own and build one of these cars then get in touch with me today because you could be joining us on the stand. So next up cars for sale don't forget guys a couple of RX5s we've got here uh, RX5 here yeah, it's a college car that we built um, all done stock Mazda engine back can be turboed of course, and then we've got a VVC, um, sorry, VVC engine um, as well, car, both of these are available and immediate ready, just waiting for first registration, so you can be the first lucky owner of Sue. And don't forget, we spoke about this, this may be going to the show at Stoney, uh, if it hasn't sold or not as well, uh, the OX5 MC is also going to be up for sale. So if you need to know more information about those cars, hook us up with a phone call or an email, and uh, Neil or myself will be happy to help you. That's it for this week, guys. If you need to know more information about the MK Sports Cars range or that, then tap us up again. Phone call, email, you know where we are, or Facebook. You can hook us up any single time. That's it. Like, share, subscribe. Catch you next week, guys.